this question is i think by hari from vijayanagara good morning sir morning uh, i am hari i am working as electrical engineer in abu dhabi based company uh, so my question is um, can we do comparisons between candidates who are going to contest in elections either as independent or uh, from any party can we uh, make a list of uh, the qualities that required and can we uh, tell these things uh, directly to the public uh, to choose uh, the particular person who was uh, selected i mean based on our comparisons uh, to choose and vote for him at least the people who are willing to vote without taking any a uh, bribe Uh, this is my first question and the second question is uh, can we get the list of voters who are going who are willing to vote without taking any bribe from uh, i mean from individual constituency or individual uh, uh, villages or towns something like that and can we make them to vote can we make these voters to vote to the person who we do comparison in the above i mean uh, who are who is better than the other uh, candidates thank you thank you hari let me take the second part of the question first is it possible to have a list of voters who are not likely to accept money for voting and other inducements now that's an unrealistic proposition because at least in the southern part of the country excluding kerala more and more people are distributed money it is reasonable to say about 60 to 70% of the electorate particularly in rural areas they are distributed money and substantial sums of money 2000 rupees 3000 5000 in some cases even 10000 rupees per vote by all the leading parties in contention and what was limited earlier to the poor population as now spread to middle classes take for instance legislative council elections where the graduates constituency and teachers constituency uh, from there in an anachronistic manner mlcs are elected even there we talk of distribution of mobile phones watches lots of money and many other things so in that climate i don't think it's possible for us to definitively say so and so voter is not going to take money but there are people we must trust that as economy improves as the greater prosperity as the greater awareness greater self reliance when people get better incomes they start thinking for themselves there are always people who want better democracy so let's come to the first question how do we enlighten the voters about the quality of candidates and what they stand for I don't know if it's possible for a credible independent organization to actually say please vote for X and not for Y. That doesn't work because in our country with caste, region, religion, and all kinds of divisions, etc., and tremendous degree of polarization and a lot of heat and noise generated without much light, that may not be credible. But giving information to people, a credible information, well-researched information, is both possible and necessary. the disclosure law which was largely a creation of lok satya movement's work in in terms of fighting criminalization of politics is meant for that there are three things primarily to be disclosed mandatorily by the candidates the educational background of the candidate then the economic background assets etc of the candidate and the criminal record if any of the candidate people can make informed choices in addition election watch movement which we piloted way back in 1999 had several components apart from disclosure of candidate details well before the law came in the then andhra pradesh we came out with a list of candidates with the criminal record contesting after tremendous degree of verification in a very credible manner in addition we had common platforms so that the candidates can debate in the in front of the public and ask questions uh, answer questions not me like you bhashans and people can then decide what kind of a candidate they want we cannot tell them x is right y is uh, wrong but people can make informed choices and 
we must also understand that a vote is much more than liking a candidate or not liking a candidate. It's also about the party, loyalty of the party, because parties in India symbolize the sacrifice, the dreams, the aspirations of a lot of people, lakhs of people. They may not always behave elegantly, but parties must be taken seriously, particularly large parties, recognized parties. Then the ideology, sometimes the candidate may not be particularly sound, but they represent maybe a better idea, a better future for all of us together. Another party may have an excellent candidate, but they may have retrogressive policies, very dangerous policies. So it's more than a candidate. Candidate is important. But in our system, even more important perhaps is what the party stands for at a point of time. And of course, the compulsions of the first-past-the-post system, whereby even if you have an outstanding candidate, the real contest is only between two contenders in most cases. So the two leading parties are seen as the potential winners fighting for power. And people all over the world, not only in India, do not want to waste their vote voting for a party which is not likely to be a serious contender. That's the reason why reform in India is much harder than elsewhere in the world. So we must keep that in mind, but nevertheless, we must make everything possible to make people much better informed so that they can make informed choices. As I said, civil society movements, not only using disclosure norms very intelligently, but also having common platforms to make the candidates come before the public in a very dispassionate, in a very calm and democratic atmosphere, answer questions and counter the, the opponent's arguments or logic so that the people can make a decision what they think is in their best interest. It's entirely possible that should be done. But endorsing people in Indian context may not be the best idea because we are too volatile, too polarized. There are too many divisive impulses in our country. In some other countries, even independent newspapers and magazines, they endorse X, Y. They give reasons. People don't give too much importance to that, but their credibility is not affected. India is not at that stage in my judgment. The moment you endorse a particular political party, you are seen to have taken a partisan line without any reasoning or logic. Given that situation, perhaps it may be more difficult in India.